Hey everyone, today we're going to be showing you how to adjust the limits on a Elite Miracle 1 gate operator. So, you're going to need to unscrew these two screws in the front and the other two in the back. As you can see, I've already done that here on this unit. So here are the limits. Um, these are the limit switches, and this is the uh, limit switch adjustment assembly. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, let's say that the gate is misaligned here and this gate is a little bit in. I've already adjusted it, so I'm not gonna do it again. Um, but this gate is not closing, if these gates are not closing symmetrically, what you can do is you can adjust your limits. So you're gonna open the gate slightly, then, um, and you really, you need to open the gate slightly so that it doesn't go outside of its limits. That would be bad. Then it's gonna get the uh, reverse sensor and you don't want that alarm. So what you're going to want to do is you're going, going to want to grab some needle nose pliers and you're going to want to grab the washer under this screw back here and then simultaneously unscrew the screw. And what that will allow you to do is then move this assembly either left or right. In my case, I had to move mine to the left. You can see where the old screws were here. And what that did is when you move the assembly to the left, it makes the gate close a little bit sooner so that way it will align the gates properly so that's about it um, if you were to put the key in here or if you were to unscrew this and disengage the motor and then move the gate it's not going to fix anything they're still going to close and be misaligned another thing to remember is um, if these screws get pretty rusty and stripped you're going to want to replace them so as you can see i've done here and i've painted it black just to prevent rusting so, um, yeah, you're going to need to just move the assembly slightly. Um, and uh, now let's go over adjusting the timer. So here is the gate control module. Here is the, um, I'm just going to identify some components for you. These are the backup batteries. We have uh, two 12 volt batteries. They're UB 1280 batteries. You can find them on Amazon or any place online. Um, and they are just for backup in an emergency. If the power is disconnected, the gate will still operate on those batteries. Here is the loop module. This loop module is configured in a uh, off, off, on configuration, which basically makes it a presence loop detector. So if a car were to drive over that loop or the loop over there, it would make the gate open again to prevent any cars from being closed. Um, here we have a, uh, a module, a power module. This is a 24 volt power module for the gate box. And here is the module for the remote, uh, remote receiver. You'll notice that my motherboard is black. Yours might be green. I'll show you a green motherboard, circuit board. Um, I've actually conducted some repairs on this circuit board here. So here is the other circuit board. I'm gonna flip it over. You can see it's pretty similar in appearance, except for the color, obviously. Um, one of the major things to remember about this is that you're only gonna hear one relay click upon closure, and with the new circuit board, you're gonna hear two relay clicks. If you do happen to accidentally short something out on this module or this module, um, or if there's water damage, or you know who knows what, Instead of paying $400, you can come in here, see where the copper traces have been destroyed, and solder your own wires to replace them. Now, do this at your own risk, because the only, um, the only, the only thing is that um, you're going to need soldering iron, you're going to need solder, and you're going to need flux. Um, flux, you know, the, the, the iron and solder, and some soldering skills to be able to do this. Um, these are not the cleanest soldering jobs, but... I will mind you that this circuit board actually did work after fixing it. Um, the reason why we got a replacement is because this surface mount component here, which I could technically replace that, um, but there could be some other components that have gone bad on the board too. This one did serve about 15, 20 years. So it was time for a replacement. It is quite expensive, but um, this thing is just really, it's been repaired probably five or six times and it was just time for a new board because some of the components have gone bad on here 
and there, uh, there is updated firmware. This chip here is removable, so you could take this out and put another one in. So um, if this chip got fried in some way, you could technically replace it. Um, it is pretty difficult to get rid of it and get it out, but you could. So here is the remote module that I was talking about. So you can open the gate with the remote. Um, you want to be really careful when wiring this because this thing is just a hunk of metal and really easy to, to short things out on. So if you see right there, we have 24 volt AC and relay. Um, you're going to need to create a jumper between pins 1 and 3. And what that's going to do is that's going to put the negative from pin 1, which is the common, um, and connect it to the relay so it can close the circuit on the negative and the and the remote relay. So I'll show you what I'm talking about over here. So if you wanted to wire this up properly, let me show you. Over here, this is an antenna wire. Please uh, just ignore this for now, but we have a coaxial extender. So you see there, uh, there is this white and black wire knot here. And these wires come from that little connector there. This red wire here, powers this module. This white wire is the uh, remote relay activator mo uh, wire, and the black wire is the common or the ground. So the negative would connect to pin one here. The, uh, the red, so the black would connect to one. The red would connect to two. Uh, three would be Three would be the uh, the white wire, and then your or sorry, four would be the white wire, and then one and three there's going to be a jumper, and then you're going to need to program your remote by pressing this little button here. You're also going to want to make sure that that this module is configured with these jumpers for uh, 24 volts AC. So this is a uh, high security mode, and this is normal security mode over here. We have 24 volt or 12 volt selection, as you can see mine set to 24 volts. And then over there, P2 and M, I can't remember what that's for, but there is a manual for this online, which you can find more about that. So if you wanted to adjust the timer on the gate, <clears throat> let me just put this back and grab the right tool to do it. Here's the tool. You want to adjust the timer on this gate there is a little potentiometer here to the left is going to be uh, more time and to the right is going to be less time so you can just go ahead and adjust that with this i would only use plastic in here you don't want to shorten anything out um, so just be very careful and yeah that will adjust the time it takes for the gate to close automatically so I hope you learned something in this video or I helped you out somehow, some way. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the uh, comments box below. And uh, I will get back to you as soon as possible. I can uh, help you out with some problems. I've been dealing with this gate for a number of years and uh, I do know quite a bit about it now. So yeah, drop me a line. Thanks for watching.